who is a UN analyst in terms of matters women. We'll be talking about violence against women and so much more. Mary, good afternoon. Afternoon to you. And thank and you for sparing time for <laughs> us. And thank you very much for giving me time to mm -hmm. be able to come. Mm -hmm. uh, and me also includes the fact that you've given UN women mm -hmm. and the women that we represent a time to be able to come to the studio yes. and celebrate. Yes. So this Friday, as I said, we are celebrating International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. And this, the, this year's theme is investing in women. Mm -hmm. Perhaps if I could ask you, is there anything to celebrate? Mm, there's always something to celebrate mm -hmm. because one we are alive and we are women and we've come from far so we can't um, have a pity party and say oh no we are doing so badly no mm -hmm. we must affirm ourselves we must celebrate how far we've come but then uh, stop a bit and look at the gaps mm -hmm. and say where would we have rather been mm -hmm. and uh, what then do we need to do to be able to go that far but we must celebrate. There are things to celebrate. All right. The reason as to why I'm asking mm -hmm. is because nowadays it's like it's a norm. Mm -hmm. Almost every day a woman is being battered and not just being battered, mercilessly at mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Every day the cases of women being killed left, right and center. It's like now it's a norm. Mm -hmm. It's a normal thing. Mm -hmm. Does that really... And we're talking about something that happened, I think, just a few days ago. Uh, there was a, a, a video that was making rounds on social media when, when a man was mercilessly beating mm -hmm. a woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are we really supposed to even celebrate International Women's Day? Because what mm -hmm. is there to celebrate? Um, well, the, as you say, there are certain events that have taken place that have really taken us backwards. Yeah. They've really taken steps backward. One, because we thought it wouldn't go this far. Or maybe... Uh, we are now aware and we are reporting things that were not reported before. Mm -hmm. So it could be that um, things has been hap th these things have been happening under the water, under the wraps. No one knows, notices much about them. And now we are bold. People are reporting or are saying them out. Mm -hmm. Power of social media, of course. Or there's just an, a, a nuance of um, recklessness, mm -hmm. impunity that I can just beat mercilessly but even worse still i can kill mm -hmm. and noting how final death is you know because mm -hmm. once you kill someone there cannot be another story mm -hmm. they cannot be that um you know uh, you you did uh, this and that's why i've done this mm -hmm. and if there's anyone who is being punished then once you die even you you didn't even feel the regret mm -hmm. so it is such a final thing, and it's the worst of the violations that can happen. Yeah. You can beat, you can maim, you can do what, all those are wrong. Mm -hmm. But killing is the ultimate, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, the other aspect of it is that who are these who are recording? Yes. Who are these that are watching? Who are these that are glorifying mm -hmm. violence? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not um, sure, but we could be uh, referring to the same clip. Mm -hmm. But the clip I saw, and I imagine is the one you're referring to, yeah. this person, as they batter, they continue to show their face around a camera. They, they continue to focus at a certain thing as if to glorify, yes. like, are you, are you checking, like, are you focusing mm -hmm. properly? And there you was know? one man who was sitting on a couch, I, I presume, and he was just yeah. watching, like, nothing is happening. He was unbothered. Yeah, so... I think it's also a wrong messaging to children mm -hmm. uh, because then it means that the, the level of impunity is high. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. But also that that happens, it should not go unnoticed mm -hmm. even by law enforcement agencies. So it shouldn't be up to us to complain and say, oh, this is up. Someone should pick it up. Someone should, you, you don't need a trigger. And that's why even in criminal justice, we have criminal uh, cases starting with Republic versus. So it is not anyone's case. It is for all of us. Mm -hmm. Meaning everyone has a duty, yes, but the law enforcement agents, no one would ask them if they actually followed up and investigated such cases and prosecuted. If only, na iwe funzo. 
and when you've just mentioned about the person who was you know filming that whole incident it makes me wonder because there's this power of social media mm -hmm. it doesn't go away so once this woman heals mm -hmm. perhaps if she's going to heal we hope that she's going to heal the video will always be there and of course some of the things that may happen is that she may be affected mm -hmm. such yeah so um there's quite a bit of also technologically facilitated violence. Mm -hmm. So much so that you'll find, even if we didn't watch so much of the violation that was happening, mm -hmm. but we watched this lady as her modesty is being unwrapped. And in future, she has to watch herself in that state of indignif indignifying yeah. a manner. Then it really means that she gets battered once again. It doesn't matter that that other beating and that other process maybe was prosecuted, got justice, but she still continues to to get um, a battering as long as she watches, as long as her children. You can imagine her parents, mm -hmm. her children, her friends, yeah. her her colleagues. Mm -hmm. So it's not something you want to to be seen mm -hmm. uh, in a state of. Yeah. However, the bystander syndrome. This guy that you're saying is seated. All of us, as we walk along, all of us, as we watch our people, our colleagues, our friends, our neighbors, citizenry, suffering, what role do we have? Do we just watch and say, uh-uh, I know those ones. They'll always kill each right, other, yeah. you know? And then maybe later really say that I told you they would kill each other, now they've died. Yeah. So isn't it uh, important than that the bystander syndrome mm -hmm. really gets also dealt with. Mm -hmm. That we stop being accomplices. Mm -hmm. We stop watching and somehow glorifying. Because uh, the, the batterer just walks out feeling very accomplished. And powerful. And powerful. Mm -hmm. And maybe comes back and apologizes. Yeah. You know, the whole cycle of violation. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that are putting us back as we want to celebrate International Women's mm -hmm. Day. But it also means that... Um, we must, we must have time to celebrate each other because we have, we have survivors that have also survived. There are battles that have been fought. There are journeys that have been walked and that women have still made some strides, big strides. Uh, we have women taking up leadership at ec uh, different echelons. Even new people in the media. We didn't have so many women carrying out very strong... Um, anchoring of either news or programs. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a lot of people in uh, heavy finance institutions. At all levels, uh, women are really coming up. Mm -hmm. But also that um, women are resilient and uh, are resilient and have been showing a lot of resilience even when it comes to economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. You'll find women really surviving and really taking up roles that are not traditional anymore to be able to survive, to be able to provide, to be able to fend for themselves, and to be able to be strong enough for either their children or families. Mm -hmm. So there are those that we still must continue to, to celebrate. Mm -hmm. There are women thriving in technology, mm -hmm. you know. So we must continue. We must count the blessings, though, yeah, yeah. and continue to thrive. But there are these gaps that we have. There are these nuances that keep pulling us back, that we must actually then discuss them during this month, we must see what do we do mm -hmm. to minimize, to reduce the gap between how far we've come and how far we've been, we are being pulled back. Mm -hmm. When you're speaking about the physical abuse, which is one form of uh, gender-based violence in Africa, not only in Kenya, mm -hmm. perhaps in Ke here in Kenya, if I could give, a, give, a, give an example, we, we've seen women go into the street. Mm -hmm. We have protested. We have, our members of parliament have tried their best in parliament. But at the same time, is that really enough to end GBV in Kenya, perhaps? Um, it's a battle that has to face multiple throngs. Mm -hmm. So we have to have all our hands on the deck. It's got to include policy. So the government has its role, executive has, has their role to actually make policies that are going to look at stopping. Mm -hmm. And more so that policies that not only look at only dealing res as a response, but also in prevention. Mm -hmm. Then we have to have budgets that follow those policies. Okay. We have to have response units that 
that talk to us. We have seen successes in uh, prosecution of cases, mm -hmm. but and also the special courts that have that have been established by the judiciary. But we have to see live uh, prosecutions mm -hmm. and sentencing that really go into on not only to punish but also to deter mm -hmm. others. It must not. Um, it's a crime and it's an offense that must not have glory. Yeah. It must be shamed. It must be named out. So there, 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 are, there are policies that would help that. There are implementation of other uh, commitments mm -hmm. that would help that. If someone, for example, has been abused, what do they do? There's got to be good responsive, um, good responsive units that really look at her. What about psychosocial support? You've just said about this lady. What about psychosocial support? How does she stand up tomorrow? And then all of us just are allowing space for someone to feel whole as a person, mm -hmm. but also for someone to stand up and really walk again, mm -hmm. you know? And even when we look at access to justice, and um, just the other day we were, we were talking with uh, some colleagues, and, and someone said, um, someone, a survivor was asked, well, did you get justice? And she said, yes, I got justice because I can now sleep mm -hmm. without being abused. So you can imagine things that we take for granted. Yeah. You can say, oh gosh, it's nine o'clock, I'm so sleepy, let me sleep. There's someone else who's wondering, the night has come, I'll, I don't might die to tonight. Yeah. You know, I don't want to go home. So really, it means that um, we, we must apply all, all, all efforts. You know, mm -hmm. if it's economic empowerment, we've got to have the government really empower women. I know there are funds that have that have been established to 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 go out to women, to go out to youths, to go out to persons with disability as an affirmative mm -hmm. action. They've, they've got to be seen. They've got to be monitored. They've got to make sense. That I mean, they've got to really do what they are meant to do okay. to empower economically, so that the vulnerabilities. Mm -hmm are reduced. Mm -hmm. uh, just before we came on set, we were, we were, we were asking mm -hmm. each other, how long would anyone of us really accommodate a sister with her two children yeah. who has run away? Yes, because the biggest thing, the, I wanted to ask, I wanted to come to that, because as we're saying that we want to see cases, mm -hmm. we want to see people prosec being prosecuted. The main issue here being, who, some women are, are even too afraid of speaking out. Mm -hmm. Some women are afraid of going to the police because for one you're saying, oh, this is the father of my children, mm -hmm. you know, my children needs their father and so on. So out of that fear, women fear reporting these cases. Mm -hmm. And that is why maybe we lag behind. Mm -hmm. And that now comes your point of, uh, of saying, once you've been, once you want to escape from your house, where do you turn to? Mm -hmm. Where do you go to? Mm -hmm. Don't you think that is what most women out here are afraid of? Yes, there's that fear. Mm -hmm. Those gaps and challenges still remain. And that's why, for example, part of what we do then uh, at a time, at a month like this of uh, uh, International Women's Month, mm -hmm. if we may say, it means that apart from celebrating ourselves, then we must raise awareness yes. on the discriminative tendencies that exist. Mm -hmm. And some of those are the discrimination that lead to violations. So. What do, we, what do we do, what do you, uh, in creating awareness, what is it that you do mm -hmm. when you're violated? Whom do you see? Where do you see them? And what kind of support should they expect? But also empowering the service providers. Mm -hmm. Where, who is readily receiving them? Which hospitals do we have? Mm -hmm. Are all our level five, level four hospitals available to do this? Mm -hmm. Are all the counties having equipped level four hospitals with the GBV uh, response centers mm -hmm. that, can actually, that you can run to. Because if you're running, you've got to run to somewhere. Mm -hmm. But us as a society, very importantly, mm -hmm. we have to change social norms. We have to stop making it the business of a woman to protect herself. Mm -hmm. Because that's where we are at now. We now look at where does she go because we imagine it's her duty to have protected herself to wear dress to, to wear like a, this a hair, to walk at this time you know yeah we are wondering why did you go to globe cinema mm -hmm. to take your matatu from there How? you should have known why did you walk along the railway mm -hmm. you should have known so why isn't it important that the perpetrator is warned and told do dare mm -hmm. and if you do 
the repercussions are heavy. Mm -hmm. So much so that the next one thinks more than twice before ever lifting a hand against another person. Mm -hmm. But being as it may, and that the fact that crime still happens, then when it doesn't get well prevented, and it spills over to becoming a crime, mm -hmm. then that's where we look at how, what's the support service for the person. Mm -hmm. But it's very important that as a society, we look at our social norms. Yeah. What are these norms that we, we are keeping that are not respecting women? Yeah. What is it that our children are learning? What is it that makes people find it okay to butter others, to disrespect others? And remember, Violations do not only include just the fact that you're physically beaten, but there's emotional, yes. um, there's quite a lot of emotional violence, economic violence, you know, a lot of discriminative tendencies, even at places of work, mm -hmm. that, that I'm a woman, I may not get a promotion, yes. because someone looks at me and wonders, mm -hmm. but what, what will happen when you take maternity leave? You know, mm -hmm. discriminative tendencies, even at the places of work, sexual harassment at places of work. Mm -hmm. So. What, what do we do to ensure mm -hmm. that everyone really changes their, their, their outlook and starts to respect women mm -hmm. and to start to respect human rights and, and pays attention to gender equality? Because we believe when there's gender equality, there's more harmony. Yeah. Men will be happier, by the way. Mm -hmm. If you empower women substantively, men will have no... Um, and nothing to complain about. But don't you think there are some men mm -hmm. who, once they realize that maybe their wives or their girlfriends are more economically empowered, that becomes a problem? Because now this man feels, I'm the one who should be providing. Mm -hmm. So how comes now you, when you're earning more money, you, you know, you'll you know, be too proud mm -hmm. because now you know I'm the one who's bringing so much on, on, onto the table and all that. So that one also becomes maybe a problem. Mm -hmm. And that is also, don't you think that is something that should also be talked about, like it's normalized, even a woman can be economically and financially empowered. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, there, there are those norm, uh, normalizations. And by the way, when it comes to uh, some of these violations, it's not only men mm -hmm. that really perpetrate them. You find it's, it's a societal thing. And even when men are perpetrating, they are perpetrating on behalf of a society. You'll find uh, a man may refuse the wife to work because he thinks that's even the way the father would would appreciate mm -hmm. you know you're doing it on behalf of the society when a woman buys land with her own money but registers it in the name of the husband or in a joint name it's a social norm she she imagines this is what is respectful or this is what is not going against the grain mm -hmm. so it's a whole societal norm but that um people when women become empowered they will become boastful or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Those are just excuses that people yeah. will have yeah. because parents are taking their children to school. Men are very proud of their daughters that are doing very well in school. So those daughters will earn. Mm -hmm. And when they earn, if then they get into a marriage situation, then it, it, it should not be lost that they actually went to school to earn, uh, to learn mm -hmm. and get a job. And so when they get a job, it is okay to be proud of your job. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be boastful. It, 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 unfortunately, when it comes to women, we interpret that there'll be boastfulness. Yeah. But it, it's, it's good to be proud of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's good to be proud of the work that, the capacities that you have. Women have heavy capacities. Our next door neighbor, Tanzania, has a woman for a president. Yes. You can imagine. So if we were to say we don't, they can go as far, you know? And uh, yesterday, I think there was a picture uh, going round of um, the uh, Tanzanian president and Indian uh, president. Mm -hmm. And it was like, look at these ladies, you know. Mm -hmm. So it is okay for people maybe to imagine mm -hmm. it will be pride, but then they are lost. It is not pride. Actually, it is, it is for the advantage of the man because then it means bills are halved, mm -hmm. you know. Bills are halved. Yeah. In fact, if you look at many gender equality programs, that happen, mm -hmm. they go a long way in supporting a male position, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Look at a simple thing like maternity. If a county is able to enhance its maternity cover for women, mm -hmm. knowing that men are the ones who earn and therefore pay, so who will save the money? Mm -hmm. it, the pair 
would most likely have been the husband. Mm. So he will save the money. Save the money yeah. Meanwhile, if the facilities in that maternity are not good enough, are not enhanced to accommodate people well enough, who sleeps then in a, in a very bad uh, facilitated facility? It is a woman. So you'll find that it is not correct that when we, we, yes, when, we, when we push for gender equality, it is purely uh, just for the benefit of women. It is for, be for the benefit of society. Okay. It is for all of us. And we get to gain um, uni uniformly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So another form of GBV is the cut. Mm -hmm. And there are some societies that are still normalizing the cut, despite uh, the government trying to place in measures to er eradicate. Actually, mm -hmm. President, retired President Huru Kenyatta had a vision of trying to eradicate the cases of the cut in the country by July of last year, mm -hmm. that is 2023. Mm -hmm. But a lot still has to be done, all right? Mm -hmm. So perhaps you can also talk to us about trying to end the cut, mm -hmm. practice of the cut. Uh, it's unfortunate that many years after the law, the cut still happens. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes we even feel when we call it the cut, it appears like it's very, it's very modest. Yeah. It is mutilation. And we, it's called FGM because then it has a mutilative a part of it mm -hmm. and um, children's act 2001 mm -hmm. outlawed uh, uh, practices that are harmful to children for example and you can see the many people who go the bigger population of who, those who go through the cut are children and children's act has been in 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 practice has been there uh, since 2001 it didn't stop in 2011 the anti-fgm um, act was was enacted still mm -hmm. you know so the implementation has a lot of um challenge and that's what we should look at yeah. because there's 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 a law there's law enforcement agents there's a citizenry that are watching and that just accepting mm -hmm. even though we must appreciate that in the last kdhs mm -hmm. um they showed that it had reduced mm 